Hey, what's the deal? Thanks for hopping in the car with Christian Addiction Recovery, the channel where like-minded individuals that face similar struggles can come so that we can discuss and learn new ways to live the best life possible and overall become the best versions of ourselves. Hey, before we get started on today's topic, and it's a good one, so stick around, I wanted to talk about, I was thinking about addiction earlier today in a, a pretty interesting illustration popped into my head and I think it's a lot like what addiction is like you know and you may be dealing with addiction yourself or you may know somebody that's dealing with addiction uh, and you may not and you may not even understand that you actually do have addictions okay but the, the point is, is th now that I'm out of it looking back and I realized that it was kind of like being at the lake and all of a sudden you get thrown off of the boat and you start drowning and you're like I'm drowning and they're like hey you're drowning and you're like oh no I'm I'm drowning and they're like hey you're drowning and you're like okay I know can you give me something that helps you swim and they throw you some goggles right and so you got goggles but you're still drowning right so you kind of like Luckily, by the grace of God, find your way to the, the side of the boat, you know, and, and your friends come over and say, you know, hey, you really need to learn how to swim. And so it's kind of like that, you know, people that haven't been through addiction before, they don't really know, they don't know how to throw you a life preserver, so to say. I hope this channel uh, can help be a life preserver to you. I, I want to preface that by saying this should not take the place of therapy. As a peer certified specialist, the first thing that I'm going to do is if you are dealing with addiction and you come to me and you're needing help, is I'm going to tell you to go get therapy. You can also go to a rehabilitation, which I highly recommend, Honey Lake Clinic in Florida. That's where I went. It was well worth it. But if you plug yourself in in that environment, then you have a good chance. Well, it's the best chance you have of getting your life together and actually having a, a good life. I, I can attest, I struggled with drugs for 20 years. I wasn't an everyday addict, but I could not get away from the thralls of addiction. I would even go two, three years off of it sometimes, but I never had the freedom. I never had the health so it's important to go back and learn those basics and if you're going to try to become the best version of yourself. It's very important, okay? And one of the, those basics that really helped transform my life was boundaries. So when I was at rehab and I was starting my recovery program, my therapist helped me to identify the boundaries that I needed to place. She didn't tell them to me. A good therapist is gonna help you figure things out on your own. All right. But one of the things that I had realized that I needed to do was to the first trigger that I realized that I needed to stop was allowing people to raise their voice to me. I realized that when I was at Honey Lake when I, and I was talking to my wife at the time and I was learning that day and through those couple of weeks that I needed to start putting these boundaries up and she started yelling at me and we were on our way to a divorce anyway, but she started raising her voice at me and it made me go realize that's a boundary. I need to put, don't, you're not going to let you talk to me like that anymore. Right. And so it was about money and I don't blame her because I'd left her in a pretty hard spot. Okay. So I called my mom right after that. She was taking care of my business while I was gone. And I asked her, I said, hey, I need you to, to wire some money. And, you know, she could tell that something had just happened. And she said, what's wrong? And I said, nothing. You know, I just had a, a, a fight with her. And she said, she just triggers you. And she raised her voice at me. And so I was like, so are you. You're triggering me, you know. And so, I mean, that's just a crude example of a boundary that I had to place in my life. It was one of the first ones that I actually started doing. It seems pretty simple, but I had let people talk to me the wrong way for far too long. And 
that was my first boundary. I'm not going to let you yell at me. And so that was a boundary for me to keep something out, right? And with addiction, you already know what things that you need to keep out, right? And it obviously, it wouldn't, if it was that easy just to get out of it, you'd be out of it, right? So one thing that you could maybe start doing is putting boundaries of to where and when you're going to use that substance like say you may say at first no i'm not going to do it on sundays and or i'm not going to do it until seven o'clock at night and i know that maybe some people would say well you just need to get off of it all together but i know how that is right that's like hey here's some goggles <laughs> thanks I, I know that i'm not doing great so here's a life preserver just put in some boundaries to just restrict the amount of time. And as you kind of get through that, it's like smoking cigarettes. If you're smoking a pack of cigarettes a day, get down to five cigarettes a day, right? Get down to that before you're just gonna try to quit. You're gonna have a lot better chance of having success. Now it's hard to get down to five cigarettes a day. I smoked a pack and a half for 20 years. So I know it's really hard to get down to five cigarettes a day. But as my self-worth increased, I'm now to a point where I realize I don't want to use cigarettes anymore. But it was never really like a, a thing that seemed viable when it was just like, don't smoke cigarettes. So it kind of has to be a, a boundary type thing, whether you're going to let that affect you or not. And if you are going to let it affect you, let it affect you less. And then you can move those boundaries a little bit later. And as much as boundaries can keep things out of your life, harm away from your life, it can also keep you from going too far to where you hurt somebody else or you just make life harder for yourself. I'll give you a really good example, okay? We all go through hormonal cycles. Women's seem to be a little bit more intense once a month. Right, but I'm not just putting this on them. I know for sure I have a day of the month and it may not happen every month with me, but it's definitely a day every couple months where I'm just like, mm, feel down and you don't know why. Well, it's probably hormones, okay? So we all go through them. A good boundary to keep for yourself would be to identify when that cycle is for the person that you're in a relationship with and I'm not going to give that person a hard time during these few days, right? You shouldn't really give anybody a hard time anytime, but sometimes just joking and having a good time can come across as being a hard time, right? So that's just a, you know, that's a tip right there, guys. And ladies, if you know that's how you get during those couple of days, then do yourself and your family and everybody a favor. Take some space and some time to yourself, right? I, that may not be always easy, but I think that's if that's something you need, it's important to let your spouse, your husband, your boyfriend, whatever, know, hey, I, I need this day to myself, okay? Because guys, we're kind of oblivious when it comes to that kind of stuff. So you vocalizing yourself and letting us know, hey, this is that time of the month that things get you know, a little iffy. And just, just so you know, guys, it's not always when you think it is. It's usually a week before that things get off. Which brings me to my next point, and that is that you have to vocalize your boundaries. Now, of course, first you have to identify the boundaries. And as your self-worth grows, you're going to be able to identify more and more boundaries. Like for instance, my first one was just don't yell at me, right? But as I've increased my self-awareness and self-worth, I've been able to identify many more boundaries, right? And there's also been some boundaries that I have been able to adjust, okay? Now, it's really important if you're going to adjust boundaries for a partner that you guys sit down and you have the discussion. So you identify your boundaries, you vocalize your boundaries. You have to find out where your boundaries meet. And once you know where your boundaries are and where they meet, it, it is much easier to avoid crossing said boundaries, right? 
if you're playing tag and you don't know where the out of bounds line is, you're probably going to go out of bounds a lot. But if you got the, the lines marked on the field, you're like, oh, okay, all right. I know all this stuff seems simple, and it is, but it's not easy, right? That's why we have to practice. Sometimes when you're setting up boundaries in a relationship, especially one that you've been in for a long time, it may be easy for the other person to get their feelings hurt or get a little insecure. But though they may get their feelings hurt for a couple of days, it's the best move because in the long run, it's going to protect this true self that you're finding. And it's going to bring you to a greater place of contentment and you're going to be happier. And then in turn, they're going to be happier. And so it's, it's a great thing for everybody. But you may have to ruffle some feathers for a few days. And if you put down your boundaries and that person can't get over it and they're staying mad at you for you putting down a personal boundary, run, <laughs> right? Run, 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 run. Because you have to be with someone that is going to respect your self-worth. They don't have to see your worth the same as your self-worth but they still need to respect that you have self-worth and that you're doing what you need to do to protect the integrity of that worth. A good personal boundary that you need to identify in yourself is when you start to overcommit, okay? Me, I was a people pleaser, but I tried to please the other people because I had a low self-worth and I thought that I would lose them as a friend if I didn't you know, uh, do this or do that. And the more I did that in an unhealthy way, the lower my self-worth came. And so with boundaries, they're going to go hand in hand with self-worth, right? I would try to please other people to the point of even ignoring what I needed more than anything. And that is alone time. I kept myself so busy helping other people and also, I was doing it because at the time I didn't have a healed heart. I was dealing with a lot of trauma and turmoil. And I had stacked so much shame on top of that that I was just a mess inside. And so, one, it was busying myself with other people, but it was also pleasing people because I didn't want to let them down and for them to not be in my life anymore. Again, all that stuff is subconscious, but that's what was going on. But now that I do have a good sense of self-worth, time to myself is my number one boundary. I understand that, especially for my personality type, it's really easy for me to busy myself with other people's problems and ignore my own. And now I understand that I need to take a day a week to just go inward and just make sure that I'm okay inside. It's really important because I'm trying to help other people. And if I'm going to help these other people, I need to be the best that I can be so that I can be the best for them. So it's kind of a weird thing. Like if you're really going to help people, try not to please them at, at the expense of your health, mental, physical, spiritual. Guys, when you start identifying your boundaries, and, and you're at the beginning of your transformation or you're just beginning recovery, stay away from them. You know, this isn't a great example because it's very obvious, but if you're an alcoholic, don't hang out with the friend that's going to ask you to go to the bar, right? Like, if you're going to hang out with them, ask them to go to breakfast or something. But that's just, that's just kind of common sense, you know, but those are boundaries that you need to set and you need to stay away from them. Don't tempt them. Another good thing to remember is don't go near your boundaries when you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. It's HALT is the acronym, H-A-L-T. Hungry, angry, lonely, or tired because you're going to cross those boundaries that protect your integrity. Okay. And 
it's going to happen anyway because you can't avoid everybody when you're hungry, angry, lonely, tired, and you're going to cross your boundaries. If you do, just get back. You can't beat yourself up about it. You have to let it go, realize that you messed up, and go back on your side of the boundary. These are great things to do when you're in recovery or you're trying to transform your life, but no matter where you're at, boundaries are important. Okay, so even if you're just perfectly happy with the way your life is, you should explore it. Just make sure what your boundaries are so that you know how to keep people from crossing those boundaries and so that you don't have to get into a place that you need to live in recovery. Hey guys, I hope this helped. Boundaries are so important and they completely aided in my transformation from someone that struggled with addiction to who I am now. And I am convinced that I am one of the most content and happiest people on the planet. And I'm just getting started. So I know that there's so much more growth to be had and I hope that you join me for my journey. Maybe you can take a journey with me. You see that button right there that says subscribe? Click it for me, okay? I'm a new channel. You're not going to see me back in your feed unless you're subscribed, all right? And also, if you thought that I did a good job explaining boundaries, please give me a high five down there in the comment section, all right? And then smash that like button or smash that dislike button so that I know that I need to improve on some things. And, and I'm always open to hear that, guys. Again, guys, y'all are awesome. And I just really appreciate you sticking around to the end of the video. I love you. Peace.